Hello, my name is Nakai Rimmer. Welcome to this video where we go through an example of finding arc length using second semester calculus. Um, I would tag this as a medium to difficult uh, level of question. The function is given to us in this manner. We're interested in walking along the curve from x equals zero to x equals three. And you'll see that when x is zero, you're at a height of zero. When x is three, you're at a height of zero. And we wanna know what is the arc length covered during that walk? Well, I think it's best not to use the function in the current format that it's in because it would require us to, to um, take the derivative using the product rule. And, and that's not what we want to do. So instead, what we should do is we should uh, distribute. So multiply root three over x. Uh, root x over 3 <clears throat> times 3 and get root x, root x over 3 times negative x and get negative x to the 3 halves over 3. All right, now the process for finding arc length can be broken down into steps. Step 1, take the derivative. So root x is derivative, 1 over 2 root x. Keep the minus 1 third, x to the 3 halves derivative, 3 halves x to the 1 half. Okay, that's step one. But before we go to step two, we should simplify that. Of course, cancel the threes. And my recommendation is to write the root x on top of the two. You see, because step two is you have to square this derivative. And so it's best to have it in this format and write two copies of it and foil it out. One over two dex, one over two root x times one over two root x is one over four X. And here is the beginning of a pattern that I need you to get, um, become able to recognize. When you do the O and I from FOIL and you get minus a fourth and minus a fourth for your middle term combining to be minus a half by simplifying it. In the next step, our job is to add one. But if we have minus a half and we add one, then those are going to combine and flip that minus a half in two plus one half. Now, factoring this on its own is quite difficult, but I want you to recognize the pattern. We got to get good at recognizing patterns. You see, think about this basically as the middle of the line above with the two minus one fourths in there. Instead of minus one fourth, we're going to make them plus one fourth. So break up the one half. Think about it as like one fourth and one fourth. What you have is exactly what's above. And when it's when you work out the foil from above, it's the O and I that combine to give you the negative one fourth and negative one fourth. Well, the O and I combine to give you plus one fourth and plus one fourth with the F and L term being exactly the same. It's exactly the same thing that you squared out, but without a minus in place of that minus, it has a plus. That's the critical step right there. Factoring it on your own or trying to work it out is difficult. Recognizing the pattern makes it a whole lot easier. You see, because the next step is to take the square root. And we need to be able to integrate in the next step after that. So it's helpful when the square root is a perfect square. We just get what's underneath. And now our job, integrate this in step five. From A to B, you're, you're always be given the bounds. You don't have to worry about that. So we're going from zero to three and we have this antiderivative best written with the negative one half exponent, positive one half exponent on the second term. Power rule in reverse where you add one to the exponent and divide by the same thing. And so what will happen with the first term is you get X to the half but when you divide by a half, it cancels out the two. Second term, you'll get x to the three halves. When you divide by three halves, it cancels out the two. Still has a three there though. Now I've specifically color coded this in blue. Look back on the slide and find the other thing that's color coded in blue. I'm all about recognizing patterns. And so the beginning of the recognition was the minus a fourth and minus a fourth where 
it helped me to figure out the algebra and make my way through it quicker. But there's another pattern going on even beyond that. Your original function, when you go through this process and, and you get minus a fourth and minus a fourth, um, later on in the process, when it's time to actually get the perfect square and take the square root and integrate, the antiderivative after integrating is exactly the same as the function, except for the sign in between is changed. So it could be like a way you can check yourself along the way. All right, a couple more steps and we're done. Put the three in. And when you put the zero in, you're going to get zero. So uh, put the three in, three to the half, and then one third of three to the three halves. Uh, but that second term there is just another three to the one half power. Two of them. The answer, two root three. Okay. Minus a fourth, minus a fourth, combining to be minus a half, and in the next step, adding one to flip it to be plus a half, which can be thought of as plus a fourth and plus a fourth. It's the same factoring, but with the opposite sign. Okay. All right, great. Uh, let's go ahead and end the video now. I have another one that's very similar to this, but we'll save that for its own video. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Comment down below. Um, like and subscribe. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.